Welcome to the Late Night Snacking Podcast. We're your hosts, Devin and Anita, and this is our weekly podcast where we grab a blanket and some snacks and talk about all things relationships, growing pains, and navigating through, honestly, life itself. We hope our experiences encourage others to grow, to become the best versions of themselves, for themselves, and for their relationships. Grab a snack and let's go. What is up, snackers? What's going Woo! on, y'all boys? And welcome to the Late Night Snacking Podcast. Welcome back to the pod. The most honest podcast. Mm-hmm. The most open podcast. Mm-hmm. And the most wholesome podcast in, in the, the world. world. Welcome back to the pod, y'all. Um, Right off the bat, I'm going to be transparent. This is our second take. <laughs> Because Hendrix, <laughs> aka Hendog, aka Young Baklava, oh. knocked over the ring light. Yeah. Ruined the whole set. <laughs> Honestly. So. He's in a very. Okay. So, a story time, I guess. Not really a story, but. So, we've been working on his crate training. Um, today was our first time leaving him in like outside of his crate but in his pen so we have like a little gate that is like attached to his crate Mm -hmm. that allows him to like move around without like moving around the house so today was our first day leaving him without me coming home for lunch and like giving him like a little midday potty break and run around break um so it was very nerve-wracking but that means he was in the pen by himself for like eight hours Yeah. yeah So, um, he just has a lot of energy, like a lot more than usual, just because like, he just hasn't had a chance to let it out today. Um, so he's choosing now (laughs) to run amok. Um, so yeah, we had to put him in the pen. So right now he's just looking at us from the pen being like, wow, y'all are really, really going to put me in here. And it's like, yes, we have no choice. Sorry, son. (laughs) Sorry, son. Um, no choice, but, um, welcome back to the pod. Um, I'm... (laughs) I'm not gonna lie, the footage was kind of funny, so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, do a what is it called? Uh, clickbait or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, stick around to the end if you want to see the footage from <laughs> from the, the actual beginning, the first take Crazy. of this episode. But um, yeah, Woo. wow. Okay, so we are back. Um, we last have returned. Last week's episode was a little more on the chill side. We yeah. just did cards. If you haven't gone to listen to that episode yet, you know, go for it. Why not? Um, it's really wholesome and really honest fun. and open. Very honest and open and wholesome. Um, but yeah, let, let's let's catch up. What's life been like this past week? Anything been going on? Uh. Other than taking the young one to the vet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Homeboy got some. <laughs> well, he had. Because he's good now. Thank God. Crossing fingers. But he had some bottom issues. Yeah. Some botox things going on that mm-hmm. we have to get under control. Um, we're thinking it has to do with his food. So we're changing the food and yeah. seeing if that's what fixes the problem. So shout out to Boogie. For yeah. The food. We arrived today. My dad, he got us an order from Chewy and just sent us the food that we needed to... A mighty heavy and hefty bag, I must say. Yeah. (laughs) So we're really grateful. Um, This really goes for everybody. Everybody that's met Hendrix so far, like, very much rallying around him and showing him love and stuff like that. So we love that because he's like our little... Our little baby. So, um, yeah. If you haven't met him yet and you have a dog, I have heard your request. His uh, last vaccination is on Hendrix. (laughs) It's almost like he does stuff on purpose. Yeah, he knows it's... He wants to get our attention so bad right now. Yes. Um, But yes, I've heard your cries. Um, He will be available for playdates after this Thursday because his last vaccine shot is on Thursday. So he's a free man. After that, um, book us on the schedule. He will be available for play dates. <laughs> so that'll be fun. But yeah, that's really been 
what we've been consumed with is like in and out vet trips trying to like see what's wrong with him and like get him together so he seems like he's on the mend right now which is really good um engagement photos on the way oh yeah watch this (laughs) i'm really excited for this especially because like We haven't had, now, besides our actual engagement, we haven't had, like, a put-together shoot Mm -hmm. since last year for the pod, which that reminds me of something we need to talk about as well, but I'll get to that in a second. But we haven't done, like, a whole, you know, put on certain outfits and, like, plan where we're Mm -hmm. going and all this stuff. So I'm really excited to do that. Um, Stay tuned. They will be on the gram soon and on the save the dates coming out soon so stay tuned for all that fun wedding stuff um that brings me to the next point our one year anniversary for the pod is coming up on Slowly approaching july 6th um so that is also why i'm excited for engagement photos because with that comes new content for the pod page and revamp photos and things like that so i'm like ecstatic for that and of course let us know you know if there's some things that you want to see from us some things you want to see Mm -hmm. us try you know to help us get the engagement up let's engage like yeah yes we have a podcast and we talk to each other but this is very much for you guys y'all yeah as well 100 percent. is it is for us yeah so So, um let's just be one family let's just one big old family you know just help help us help you (laughs) And we'll put stuff on the page, too, so you can, like, give us ideas or things that you want to see. Um, I know when we asked, like, what do y'all um, want us to do for a topic or what do y'all want to see on the pod? Like, we did get some cool responses, so mm-hmm. uh, that stuff will be coming soon. But, yeah, just keep engaging with us. We want to give, of course, like, content we want to do, but it really is for y'all. So, like, content yeah. that you want to see, we want to give that to y'all for sure. Um, so, yeah, so stay tuned for engagement picks coming um so i know on the last pod i had mentioned that my uh bridal party was coming into town um for the weekend and so they did and um this is exclusive information so if you are a pod listener you get inside scoop on things going on Um, and if you don't listen to the pod, that sucks because I'm probably, you know, nothing, I'm probably not going to post this on my page, but, um, so as of now, I have my ceremony dress and my reception dress. So, (laughs) so I know some of you probably saw my story this weekend, um, that was for my reception dress. I already found my ceremony dress, like two months ago which is on accident yeah that was not supposed to happen but i hate saying when you know you know but like ladies you will feel me if you're getting married or if you've been married like when you put it on you just know so i already have both dresses i'm really excited they're beautiful and i can't wait to break the gram with them next year (laughs) (laughs) but um but yeah so uh had a really fun day with the bridal biddies. That's what I call them. Um, so we were down one, but that's okay. We still were able to go out and drink and have fun and party together. And it was just a great time. Um, and then Sunday, uh, me and Alicia and her sisters went to the Bop to the Top tour. And I have to say that, first of all, that's For all why... For the, the Disney kids out there and the yes, sing-alongs and it was, things of that nature. It was amazing if you are anywhere where this tour is going please go tickets are cheap and it's worth every dollar that you pay like if you are really like into disney movies like that like high school musical and disney shows like hannah montana and stuff like that impossible yes like if the jonas brothers anything like if that was your shit like it was my shit you will pass away of happiness so it was amazing that's why my voice sounds a little like like eh. like this Uh, okay not like that (laughs) but um yes that is why i sound a little hoarse um because i was screaming my lungs out um oh and monique coleman was there and she's a 
queen. So it was just fabulous. If you're anywhere where the tour is going, buy a ticket and go. Like, you won't regret it. I love that for you guys. I, like... You guys are like teenage girls all over again, screaming at the top explain. of your lungs. It's just at like the sleepover. That's just well, that's just a part of me where it's like when I'm in the car, like you know, I'm I'm playing like yeah, you know, like R and B and stuff like that. But like if I'm in the car with people, like like I really want to play Cheetah Girls and Jonas Brothers, but like I can't all the time. You know what I'm saying? So like it was just a place to like be shamelessly Disney person, and it was just. It was amazing. I had that Disney Channel. I'm Anita Rivera, and you're watching (laughs) Disney Channel. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so that was my weekend. It was amazing, and yeah, next weekend's gonna be fun too. Oh yeah. So we have some fun stuff coming up. I'm excited. Oh, snacks. Oh no! You guys are gonna be impressed with mine though. So I'm drinking my snack. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, we got a little bit of the green juice, the green machine right here. Mm-hmm. A little bit of celery. Okay. Got some kiwi in here. Some ginger root. Ooh. And I think there's a little bit of a little bit of kale in here. Wow. Yeah, so it's very green. Fluorescent green. It does have a nice color to it. It's delicious, by the way. Like it's. I tasted it's it. It's awesome. It is good. It's really good. Shout out to my juicer. Shout out to you for getting my juicer. Mm-hmm. No problems. Um. Now, Devin. Nothing like the sweet taste of health. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> um, that was I, my commercial audition. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I mean, we'll see if you get casted. Ten out of ten. Oh, okay. Ten okay. out of ten. Sure. Um. Anyways, so <laughs> give me my slipper back. I can't show my toes on camera. <laughs> Not for free. <laughs> Stay for the Patreon. <laughs> Jeez. But no. Um. I don't have a snack. I will say I was a little um frantic trying to get everything together and worry about the dog yeah so, shout out to the silk scarf wonder over there yeah he i was just not focused on a snack i'm sorry i oh i feel like i do this almost every other week where i'm like oh i forgot my snack i forgot my snack like i just i, I gotta stop doing that i'm aware you gotta be committed to the fitted i do i do yeah committed uh all right shall we get into unpack the snack yeah. We didn't get to do it last week, so... Um, yeah, so we, we really owe you guys. We do. Week, for sure. We have kind of a funny one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I remember it, so I won't read off the thing, but um, somebody asked, what is a healthy balance between being up each other's ass and having space from each other? Wow. Um... <laughs> hmm. Honestly, I would say the hobbies. Hundred percent. The hobbies is when you know the the hobbies play a, a very key role here. Oh my gosh. Cause let's say like I'm into like soccer and skateboarding and you know hanging out with friends like doing different stuff like that, whereas she is not. So it leaves me no other choice but to go and participate in these things by myself Mm -hmm. or with like my friends or something yeah same like her like she goes to a dance class in the mornings her bar class and stuff like that i am not a dancer do not partake i don't partake in that so this kind of forces her to do something on her own Mm -hmm. or with some of her friends who are into dance and stuff so Mm -hmm. that's the i guess the balance yeah there other than the fact that we're separated from each other while we're at all work all day yeah <laughs> like, yeah so i would say hobbies and, and work like yeah pretty much helps like settle that yeah i think i think that's a good um answer for like a healthy balance because i that is hard like how do you really balance like being together all the time and like having healthy space 
from each other. And I think hobbies is like mm-hmm. a great way to do that. Um, cause I don't think there's anything wrong with like, like if he had a soccer game or something, like if I went to a soccer game mm-hmm. or if I was doing like a pop-up class or something like he's, um, uh, he sat in on like a dance class yeah. that I've taught before and stuff like that. Like, I I honestly think that it's even healthy to do it that way to like let each other see each other during that time to mm-hmm. like see your partner in their element. I guess you could say, um, but doing things separately definitely does add to the healthy balance because there's no reason, especially when you live with each other, like it's hard to be like if you're not at work. It's hard to spend time apart from each other because you live under the same roof. So mm. things like like l- this past weekend, like I go to a concert with the girls or yeah. I go out and downtown with the <clears> girls <throat> and like you go and you hang out with your friends sometimes or like mm. some of your friends come into town or you go and you go to Columbia and make music and stuff like that. Like it's healthy to do like just because there's free time doesn't mean we have to spend it together just because we live right with each other i think that that helps and then you balance it out with things like oh let's go grocery shopping together oh let's watch a movie together Mm -hmm. like you can balance it out that way but not everything has to be done together right so and you can honestly like create space like within the home yeah you know what i mean like i know with me and her like we could be in the same room but we're we're two like we're doing doing two two separate things separate things yeah you know what i mean like I guess because we had that understanding that like we can share a space and not have to have dialogue all the time Mm -hmm. because that is a secret. That is like a little tidbit, ladies, like with with us guys, it's not that we don't want you around. It's not that we trying to get away from you. Mm -hmm. We want you around. (laughs) Just not talking to us. (laughs) Like this is the part where we want you to ignore us. Like let's. Sit on the couch. Let's lay here, but pretend I'm not here. <laughs> I know you're here. So you know here. It's more about the presence, less about go. like the interaction. Exactly. It's just like as long as I know that you're near, you're safe. I can see you. Like we're good. Like we don't have to talk right now. We don't. <laughs> we don't have to do that. I think too for couples <laughs> that don't live together, I think like the whole being up each other's ass thing can have a lot to do with, um, like calling each other and like Mm -hmm. maybe um yeah like calling and like facetime and stuff like that i know like i used to do it when i was long distance and stuff like that so like couples that are long distance tend to like always be on the phone with each other and stuff i think like the healthy space is to like go throughout the day and try maybe like if you're just texting each other a little bit but maybe save calls for like the end of the day to like Mm -hmm. regroup and stuff when we weren't living together i mean you were only living an hour away from me but like you were in school and i was in work so i we were doing two separate we had two separate lives like we would do that like we would talk a little bit during the day like text each other but like our main time to like call and regroup was like during the night mm -hmm. because even now even living together like we don't talk to each other too much throughout the day because then there's nothing to talk about Mm -hmm. at the end of the day I will say, as somebody who's stage five clinger, I had to learn that the hard way. But, like, that truly is the best way to do it because then you suffocate your partner. That's where the being up the ass thing comes a little, becomes a little too much. Like, you have to add that healthy space in there that you don't have to be around each other all the time. You don't have mm-hmm. to talk to each other all the time. Like, it's okay to have that space. Do your separate right. hobbies. Do your separate things. And then you can regroup or you can do hobbies together to like balance that out. Right. But Cause I mean, think about it. Like <clears throat> if we've been texting all day and then, you know, we're on the phone at night or whatever at the, the end of the day, what do we really have to talk about? Yeah. I'm not going to ask you how your day went. I know exactly how it went. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard from you all day. Like, we yeah. talked literally all day. So I know yeah. exactly how your day went. Yeah. Who pissed you off at work? What you had for lunch? Like, yeah. I know all these things. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like save some some space. That that space creates like, I guess, converse, conversation for later yeah. on. Like it builds like a, like a little anticipation for us. And it's like, oh, like. Really curious on how your day went. Yes. I didn't talk to you all day. I didn't see you all day. So, yeah. like, what's up? Yeah, I think anticipation is a great word. I was going to say, um, I was going to say, like, it gives you a chance to, like, miss each other 
a little bit. Like right. when you do things right. separate from each other, it builds that anticipation. It's like, oh, I wonder what mm-hmm. happened to them today. And then like your partner has this like juicy story or whatever. Like it makes it more like it makes the conversation richer when mm-hmm. you have no idea what the person's going to come and tell you or whatever. So um, I hope that answered the question. Yeah. I've, I, I feel like, did a good job. yeah. I feel like that was good. Um, okay, so as far as le topic, um, ooh, I haven't said that in a minute. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we were thinking, um, this is again more of like a light hearted one, but we might make this a two parter. So uh, we were talking about it yesterday, and it came up to where, like, what's some bad dating advice we've heard. Yeah. Um, and we thought it was kind of funny, like some some advice that we've been given. Um, so we wanted to do an episode on just bad dating and relationship yeah. advice that's just out there in the world or that we've heard um, and why it's bad. Not just like, oh, this is funny. Like people say this and they don't know what they're talking about. Like we're going to get into like why it the actually... The most senseless stuff. Why you shouldn't say this to somebody why you shouldn't take this as advice yada 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 um and the two-parter is um if we like this type of content engage with us and let us know Mm -hmm. um we'll bring a part two and we'll do actual like sound good dating slash relationship advice that you should either give or take um and we'll do it that way so cool shall we start off with the bad advice (laughs) <laughs> yeah we <stopped> life. <laughs> <laughs> okay so lay topic bad dating slash relationship advice first one on the list people telling people to play hard to get boo boo ignorance literally stupid like. boo <laughs> um okay ugh I hate this one. Um, I've Disgusting. been given to it personally or like uh, basically like don't try too hard or don't like him more than he likes you. Play hard to get. Be mysterious. All of these fall in the same bucket, mm-hmm. I guess you could say. Um, I just I don't like that because I feel like you're not being genuine if you're quote unquote playing hard to get. Right, it's an act. It's all exactly. It's already the word is in it. Play. You're playing. <laughs> You're playing a game when this is real life. <laughs> like these are somebody else's feelings. These are your feelings. Like I think when people give this advice, what they're basically trying to say is like, don't be too available. And that I understand. Mm-hmm. As far as like when you're first starting to see somebody or even when you're in a relationship with somebody, we just talked about it. Having your own life, having your own hobbies, things that you do by yourself is healthy. So right. I think people are, that's what people are trying to get at is like still live your own life. Like don't drop everything just because you're starting to see this person because you're too available. Mm-hmm. But people twist it and they're like, right. just play hard to get, act like you don't like him. You don't have to act like anything. Just like keep doing what you're doing with your life and your hobbies Mm -hmm. by default you won't be so available for this new person that's stepping into your life i feel like that's what's trying to be communicated it's just not coming out the right and on the other hand it's like if i like you and you know this and i'm willingly try to spend time with you Mm -hmm. and you're not gonna allow me to do that or Give me the yeah. time of day because you want me to chase, chase. you. That's the other part Absolutely of it. not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Because that's going to bring <laughs> everything that guys say true. How complicated you are. I'm literally mm-hmm. just trying to love on you. And you're like being weird. Like, yeah. For no reason. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, you guys are extra. Like, I'm kind of done here. Yeah. You see that a lot. Like, guys just honestly just get tired of the chase. Now, you have some guys who enjoy that. They chase mm-hmm. for sport. <laughs> like. Yeah. It strikes their interest a little bit. And so mm-hmm. it's kind of like cracking a code or whatever. Like, I live a civilian life now, so. Oh, my God. None of those games. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like. 
Yeah. Don't you don't have to act. Yeah. Like, that's like she said, if you are living your life like you've been doing before you met this person, like right. you'll see if you have time or not for them or if you want to give them that time of day or whatever the case may be. Yeah. I mean that's a piece of it too, is like if you have the time for somebody and you actually really like them, give them your time. Like yeah. I know nobody's obligated to that, but like it, I think we said this on one episode, like, it's okay to be nice to people. Yes, <laughs> like, like, if you like somebody, just like them and give them your time. Like, what is the reason of the playing hard to get? You want to seem like you're, like, this hard to get person. And, like, it's just you just want extra attention. But, like, it's not, it's going to end up b- with you being alone. Mm-hmm. Because that other person is just going to get tired of that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't like that advice. Don't play hard to get. Yeah. So if you're telling people that, don't. Cut it out. <laughs> don't tell people <laughs> so we that anymore. That's what we tell the dog. Cut Make it out. Make the world a better place by not telling people that. Yeah. Okay. Another one I don't like. If they can't handle you at your worst, oh, they don't deserve you. At your best. At your best. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Because you know that you're toxic. Because wow. what? Sheesh. Wow. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> I don't like that one because I think, it, this is just my opinion, that it's basically saying like, it's basically being like, Everything that's that I am, good, bad, ugly, all this stuff, you just have to accept it because you're with me. While there is some truth to your partner loving you through highs and lows and flaws and perfections and things like that, it's I feel like it's an excuse for bad behavior as far as like, oh, this is just the way I am. So mm-hmm love it or leave it or whatever um if you don't like me at my worst when i'm this way towards you or when i'm yelling at you or being derogatory towards you that's just me at my worst so if you don't love me then then Mm. you don't love me at all and you don't deserve me at my best like to me that's just an excuse to like continue to do have bad habits when like if there are things you actually should better about yourself then you should be doing that, not using that phrase as like a clutch mm-hmm. to like make your partner love you through all of that. Like, no, if you have some healing to do and some fixing to do, damn, our camera just died. No Sorry. Way. I knew it wasn't all the way charged. That's crazy. I told you that. But we're going to continue as an audio episode. So at this point, you'll probably see a picture come up of us or something like that. Yeah. Um, but the show has to go on. So sorry, y'all. Um, visual ends there. But um, yeah, I'm just not really a fan of that. I will say it is situational too. Because like I, I take that and, you know, I look at it like. On one side, yeah, it's like what you were saying about, you know, giving bad behavior like a pass or whatever. And then I look at it like, you know, some people are, I don't know, like some people are in different seasons in their life where things are just not rocking and rolling. Sure. How they should. So I kind of look at it like that too. Like, you know, at someone being, I guess, quote unquote, at their worst or they feel like they may be at their worst. Like, Mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, you know, I might not have a car right now. I might not have a job right now. Mm -hmm. Like, is that an excuse to like leave somebody though or like not talk to them? I mean, for some people, it very Mm -hmm. well could because some people don't want to, you know, carry that burden. Yeah. But I think it does. I think it is kind of situational. Like, it all depends too. Yeah. You know, if, People are in like these these bad seasons in their life or I guess it just depends on what somebody considers as like their worst. That's like in my head, I don't see worst as like a low part. Like I I I, so this is where everybody's different is like I when I think of worst, I think of like how am I coming off towards you? Mm -hmm. Like what is my state of being 
is what I see as like, am I at my best or am I at my worst? Right. I don't see like me having no money, no car, no house, no job as like my worst. Like when I was unemployed, I wouldn't consider that my worst. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But like everybody's different. Somebody might consider being unemployed and no car their worst. Yeah. So I guess, so it, it is the way you look at it. I looked at it as like behavior and I just right. don't think it's okay to be like, take it or leave it mm -hmm. when like, yeah, no, that's not if, fair. if there are things you have to fix about yourself, <clears> then like you should, you know what I mean? But yeah, I agree. I mean, when, when you're going through tough times and stuff like that, like if somebody really does love you, then I do mm -hmm. believe they should stick <clears throat> beside you but there's only so much somebody can take right, and like right. you know what i mean it's all subjective but that's just why i don't like that phrase because it's such an end all be all right where it's like uh like there's because, give and take to that yeah because it's like you know like you were saying oh you know for people it's like a pass for people who have like bad behavior and stuff it's just like oh well, that's just the way i am like but that doesn't make it right though right right just because that's the way you are does not mean that you're right right you probably do need a major adjustment somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, either you're just too lazy not to do it or you've just gotten so comfortable with the way you are. Mm -hmm. You just expect everybody else to accept it around you. And, like, yeah. that's not fair. At all. Um, and that's where the phrase comes in where it's like, oh, like, you don't deserve me at my best. Like, if you can't accept this from me. And it's like, right. no, because it's not right. <laughs> so, yeah, right. It's, it's not right. <laughs> so what I have to beg for your best and deal with your words. Absolutely like, not. Yeah. That's so, a no-go. Yeah. So, not really a fan of that one. Um, another one is that each partner should do their fair share in a relationship. As in, like, 50-50. Mm. And... I, I honestly used to think that way. And then... Me too. Like, the older I got, like... It's not like that. It's not? At all. Like... I don't think it should be 50-50. I think it should be, you know, all in. Yeah. Both of you all in. You know what I mean? Like, picking up the slack when, you know, your partner isn't there to show up or can't show up for that, you know. Right. Just picking up the slack where it needs to be. Just basically playing your part where, where you're needed. Where you're needed. Exactly. Honestly. Yeah, I agree. Um, I definitely used to think it was like a 50-50 thing, but just coming from firsthand, like it's exhausting to like expect your partner and this this may be a word, like it's exhausting to expect your partner to meet you where you're at a hundred percent of the time. Mm -hmm. Cause it's just not realistic. And I say this almost every episode, but like the same grace that you're expecting from your partner, like you have to give that back to your partner. Like your partner is not expecting you to meet them where they're at all the time mm -hmm. so you can't expect that from them some days i'm 80 and devin's 20 some other days devin is 90 and i'm 10 like and it's just that's just the way it is sometimes like we ebb and we flow and we have to like just pick up where the other one can't because we do that for each other and right. it just goes both ways to me that's the fair share is mm -hmm. like falling in line where you need to be now, don't get me wrong. There's expectations that we have of each other. So this is not just oh, yeah, a free for absolutely. all. But just as far as like wanting it to be 50-50 all the time in terms of like chores, energy, money. Like mm -hmm. it's just it's not realistic that way. And you're going to break your back trying to like right. make it that way all the time. Like don't don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't exhaust yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Don't exhaust yourself. Ooh, one that grinds Devin's gears. Happy wife, happy life. Stupid. <laughs> That's absolutely insane. Like, <laughs> I, and as you can see, at like least that's, ten people listening to this, you had to have made upset. Just no. probably so. <laughs> probably so, and, and that's, that's because okay. you're selfish, and you think that only <laughs> your happiness matters. Mm -hmm. When indeed it doesn't. Like, think about it. Like, look at it like a relationship. You know what I mean? Like, if one is happy and the other one isn't happy. Like, I put it this way. If we were a couple, 
well, which we are, but I'm saying we were like dating or whatever. Mm. Like, and I and you weren't happy. Mm. Everybody would tell you to do what? Girl, leave his ass. Right. <laughs> now, what if the shoe was on the other foot and I wasn't happy? <laughs> oh, suck it up. What are you doing wrong? It's got to be something you're not doing right. Or why aren't you happy? Is, is she causing you not to be happy or is it something else? Like. Bro, what? I, well, how come I don't get that option that she gets? It's just leaving. <laughs> because, guys, our feelings never matter. Oh, wow. It's the truth. <laughs> it's just the truth. No, I'm joking. That's a joke. Oh, but wow. no, like, society kind of sets it out to be that no, way. To yeah. Where, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. men aren't allowed to be sensitive. Men aren't sure. allowed to show any emotion yeah. or anything like that. But, like, that's kind of what makes us human. Sure. That's what makes us us. Yeah. So, yeah, like... It, I don't I don't like that because it sounds like, hey, do whatever it is to keep to your wife happy. happy. Yeah, right. to keep your wife happy, like or to make your wife happy. Just do that. Nothing else. Just do that right there. As long as she's happy, your life will be all right. And that's like basically saying that like your wife has absolute control, control over, over your life. Yeah. And like your happiness and your moods and stuff like that. Yeah. And it shouldn't be like that. No. Like that's so that's just really unfair. But yeah, I hate that. <laughs> That's so stupid. I just let you talk on that one because I just, I mean, I agree. I yeah. don't have anything else to happy add. Life, I just, happy life. Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> like, yeah. Not always. There's two people in a marriage. Not one exactly. Person, like, one, what not about one sole person's feelings matter. And over the matter. other. Right. Yeah. I agree. So, yeah. Fellas, <laughs> uh, guys who've told me this, who are married for trying to give me advice, like, you get that one probably more now than yeah. I get that. I've heard that a lot. Right? Yeah. Like there are sometimes like usually when I meet people, like I met this guy at work. Mm-hmm. He uh he does something with like the water or something like checking the pH, making sure like water isn't contaminated and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. he came and I asked him. You know, I, I asked for some advice. I was like, man, do you gotta? You got any advice for a young guy like me, you know, getting ready to get married? And, you know, he was just like, oh, you probably heard this one, but happy wife, happy life. And I just kind of like rolled my eyes. Like, I really wanted to walk away. <laughs> that was so nasty and disgusting to hear him say that. Like, <laughs> I just really wanted to walk away from him. But, yeah, I, I hear that a lot. And it equates to me. It just sounds like, you know, as long as, as long as you know, she's happy, your wife's happy, whatever, everything else is fine. And, like. What about me? Like that's yeah, it's not fair. I feel another one. It's a good thing if you don't argue. Slash, your relationship should feel easily, easily, easy. I I I I I I I I I just simply don't agree with this one. Um, and I know that's probably like a <gasps> from us because I feel like every other. Uh, Every why can't I talk? <laughs> Every other episode, you and I are like, oh, we don't really like we don't really fight a lot. We don't really argue a lot. We really don't. Though. But but that doesn't. But that mean doesn't mean that, that we don't have like just easy. Yeah, but it also doesn't mean that we don't have disagreements. You and mm-hmm. I don't see eye to eye on at least like fifteen things a day. Like yeah. <laughs> we have disagreements about a ton of things, but it's just the way we go about it. Like it doesn't have to be an argument. Not right. every time you don't see eye to eye or d- every time you disagree. It doesn't need to be an argument. Exactly. It's just a conversation. Because like, that, and that stems from like people get this notion that like because you disagree, that means somebody is wrong. Right. Both of you feel like the other person is wrong mm-hmm. because you feel so strongly about your point of view and, you know, what you think, mm-hmm. you know, and it's kind of like it's a weird thing because you kind of want to turn them a little bit yeah to make them like kind of agree with you just to kind of i don't know i don't know if it's like an ego thing or what it is it's like a psychological thing i think it's just natural human behavior yeah like you don't want to be wrong exactly when but that's the thing though like nobody's wrong right you just have your perspective i have mine it's two different perspectives Mm -hmm. we don't feel the same way about each other's perspective Mm -hmm. but it's okay we can agree to disagree exactly but people think like Oh well, if you don't agree with me, then you're just wrong. Like, you, why don't like why don't you think like me? Why don't you, like, like yeah, that's not necessary. Yeah, it doesn't have to. Go, it's not that deep. Yeah, it's not. Um, I think it. I hate the word argue because the saying is like it's a good thing if you 
don't argue but it's not arguing it's just like you're two different humans who grew up completely different ways Mm -hmm. like you came from different places you have different families you had different upbringings like you're not going to agree on everything like it's just not possible so you're gonna disagree about things probably more times than not and like that's okay it doesn't mean that like coming from our point of view doesn't mean that our relationship is easy going and like we have no problems and we you know everything's easy because we don't argue like we never want to come off that right. way like we disagree all the time like and yeah. it's and that's okay we just have conversations about it but like i just don't like that advice of like oh like you know everything should be okay like yeah. your relationship should feel easy like it shouldn't have to feel hard and stuff like that where it's just like but there's other areas within the relationship like yeah it's multiple areas of the relationship like other than you know just things like that yeah that are you know difficult yeah disagreements are good they're healthy they force you to communicate mm-hmm. effectively um so it's not i mean it's not the end of the world if you and your partner don't see eye to eye on something it's actually good yeah you shouldn't be agreeing on everything that Nine times out of ten means that somebody's not speaking up about something that's bothering them or something that they disagree with Mm -hmm. that you're doing. So (laughs) I'll say, like, if you grew up as, like, an only child, being in a relationship is a very effective way to teach you how to share. Yeah. (laughs) It's a very extreme version of it, too. But (laughs) it's like, I don't know. It's it's kind of mind-blowing. Yeah. Well, I mean, everybody grows up different ways. Yeah. Um... Okay. This is one that you said you've heard before where you said, don't let your left hand know what your right's doing. Yes. I don't like that. (laughs) Not a fan of that. Okay. So if you live a civilian life like I do. (laughs) You in the civilian life. (laughs) That doesn't exist. (laughs) (laughs) And what I mean by civilian is you're a citizen, you go to work, you are involved in a some type of serious relationship rather be an engagement marriage whatever you're civilian you don't live by street codes no longer (laughs) that clubbing and going to you know oh where the hoe is that like nah that is not civilian living (laughs) so once again i live a civilian life so don't let your left know what your right hand's doing like that doesn't make sense in the sense of like if you're married and also in the sense of like if you're married and living together like this is somebody you're spending the rest of your life with yeah they should know everything about you pretty much almost everything that you have going on too to a certain extent yeah now do they need to know about every conversation you're having with people throughout the day not necessarily right but like if you're living together you obviously share a mortgage you share bills like so knowing each other finances Money. is a really mm-hmm. big like a really big thing like i don't like especially with finances because it is it's been said that that's like one of the number one things that leads to divorces and stuff up. like that and breaks people up yeah it's finances lay it out on the table yep. and do not hide anything yep nothing don't don't hide anything because well for one if you're married what are you hiding from stuff from your wife or your husband for anyway right like you've made a, a whole commitment in front of people like mm-hmm. it doesn't get more secret <laughs> like yeah how could you be secretive or why would you want to but yeah no nah, like i don't i don't believe in that like now if you're dating somebody you don't live together like you guys just like hang out through the week and on the weekend and stuff like that then i will say that's that's fair game only because you don't really know where this relationship is going to hit. Sure. If you haven't solidified anything. Yeah. If it's or, not serious or whatever. Like, yeah. You know, you're not really having the conversation of, you know, moving what in each we? other. Or yeah. What are we? Yeah. You know, are we, you know, trying to plan your future with this person? Right. Right. Free game. You don't have to tell them anything if you honestly don't want to. Wouldn't suggest it, but you are free to do that. But as far as like in a situation like us, like I don't hide anything from Anita. Same. Anita pretty much knows everything about me. She knows 
who my friends are. So if I'm like, oh, I'm probably going out with the boys or whatever, she knows who I mean. Who the, yeah. She'll probably ask anyway, but <laughs> she has a good general idea of who my friends are. Like, yeah. She's met them also. Like, finances, we both know what each other make. Yeah. No secrets. Yeah. We yeah. know <laughs> when each other gets paid. Yep. Because that affects, like, HOA yep. and mortgage yep. and groceries and like when you have responsibilities when you share responsibilities like that with someone else like that is not a time to be hiding things and hiding information hundred like, percent because both of your livelihoods are at stake yeah so you don't want to jeopardize that by trying to be too secretive or call yourself like keeping you know keeping things down on low can't let the white know like what for dude that's yeah. that's that's literally stupid yeah I agree. I think, too, like, the biggest thing about combining lives and stuff like that and knowing about what's going on in each other's lives is, like, it just makes you more of a team. Like, that's the biggest thing, like, the biggest point of view I, co I come from as far as, like, relationships and stuff like that. Like, you should really feel like your partner is, like, your teammate and y'all are playing on the same team. Like, mm -hmm. there should you should not be playing against each other. That's where the secrets and shit starts coming in. Like, now you have your own little stuff that you're doing right. on the side. Like, we're no longer a team at that point because exactly. I'm not aware of what's going on in your hand. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, we need to be on the same type of time, playing with each other on the same team, like, Right. When you start these secrets and hiding stuff from each other and stuff like that, like you've you've thrown that away. Like honesty and transparency even. is literally the beginning of like I guess like a a solid foundation for like teamwork. Yeah. Yep. And I look at like Kobe and Shaq, like they're in sync. Yeah. They're always in sync. Like they were, you know. Kicking it with each other, hanging at practice and stuff like mm -hmm. that, like that that communication, like it picks up and yep. helps. Mhm. Mm Good stuff. Um, another one. Uh, opposites attract. Short and sweet. I hear that all the time. There's got to be some truth to that. Got to be some truth, but I I do agree that like people who are like kind of different from each other mm -hmm. do attract each other. Like, I would say a main thing for me was that you were, like, a very carefree person. And that, to me, was attractive because that's something I'm not. And that's, mm -hmm. like, a side of me that I felt you could bring out and stuff like that. So, there is truth to that. But being completely different from somebody that mm -hmm. you're dating or in a relationship with, honestly, in my opinion, is just, like, a recipe for disaster. Because where are you agreeing on anything right like i'm talking about to the point like i'm talking about completely opposites like y'all should at least be on the same page about like what do you where do you want your future to be like do mm -hmm. you even like any of the same kinds of foods do you right. maybe like some of the same music like are you anywhere near the same place do you know some of the same people like mm -hmm. there has to be some common ground somewhere because what do you ever bond over if you're right. if you don't share anything in common with your partner like when do you ever find time to do things together mm -hmm. like you know what i mean like mm -hmm. there's things that we like to do together and there's things that like i'm not really a movie person or whatever right you're a huge movie person but you just know that that's probably something that we're not going to do together all the time yeah. is like watch movies but there's a ton of other shit like Eating, going out on the town, going for walks, being out in nature, hiking, going mm -hmm. to the mountains. Like, there's a ton of other shit that we share in common that we can do together. Right. There has right. to be commonality, or else you and your partner are never going to hang out and, like, right. do things with each other. Because two things, but you don't ever, well, I guess you do see, I was going to say, because you never see the moon out with the sun. Yeah. yeah you definitely do. Yeah. Sometimes. It's okay, sweetie. Bad analogy. <laughs> Okay, still love you. It's okay. Feel, I knew, feel I knew, really good about that. One I know you were really confident. I knew you where you were going for. But. So it's like night and day. You never see the moon out with the sun, do you? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> you most certainly do. I'm weak, but yeah. So the saying is kind of funny. I mean, there is some truth to opposites attracting, but don't be complete opposites. Like, yeah. 
there's got to be some sort of similarities there. Um, okay, last couple ones. Um, oh, I've heard this. Like, if they're not marriage material, don't give them the time of day. Mm. I don't love that one. I don't. I think that's situational too. Yes and no. But I want to. I want to hear your take though. Only reason why is because like I I read it somewhere and I liked the way they phrased it where it was just like marriage is a side effect, not the goal. Like it shouldn't. The goal shouldn't be I'm gonna get married. So like I'm just gonna have to find somebody who fits mm-hmm. this. Whereas like you'll you probably miss out on people along the way that can like teach you life lessons like maybe you'll get your heart broken a few times along the way but like those are the things that make you you and who give you experiences and mold you into the person who you are like currently Mm -hmm. so if you're always looking for like somebody who is quote-unquote marriage material like you might miss out on other people that you're supposed to meet and date and yeah i agree you know what i mean so I don't know. I just feel like people get so fixated on like, I want to be married. I want to be a wife. I want to do this where it's just like marriage shouldn't be the goal because then you're going to literally just pick up the first person that you think fits those Mm -hmm. boxes when you really should just organically meet somebody that and then you naturally go into like, oh, I could see myself marrying this person because they're X, Y, Z, not, oh, this person has a car, house, a good job, and is financially stable. Yeah, that's marriage material. Mm-hmm. Click and you go. Like, yeah, not even knowing they could be like the biggest be, jerk. No exactly. Man. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to say like people very much fixate on marriage as like a goal, and like it. Not mm-hmm. everything has to be marriage material. You can date somebody who's maybe not marriage material in your eyes, and you grow together, and maybe it organically turns into somebody that you marry. Like it doesn't have to be. Yeah. This perfect thing right off the bat. But the reason why I say it's situational is because there are people that exist that pretty much know exactly what they're looking for or what they want. Like, coming out of my last relationship, like, though I wasn't looking, like, I knew exactly what I wanted in my next relationship. For a fact. I didn't have, I didn't go looking for it. It just, you know we just kind of happened again Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like so like but you didn't go into it with this girl needs to be marriage material no but i mean i guess depending on the situation you're in like you said like for instance if you have a guy who's like in like his mid-30s let's give him like 35 36 like Playing the field has gotten old, obviously. Like, mm-hmm. that bachelor life's played out. Club and just kind of played out. Like, guy probably wants to start a family. Mm-hmm. Though, a lot of people would tell him he's, he's a little late. But, you know, like, he's not going to go and, you know, invest a lot of his time into somebody he just thinks is cool. Mm-hmm. Versus somebody like, yeah, she's cool to hang with, but... I could never see her as a wife. You have people who are like that. Mm-hmm. I've had situations like that where it's just like, oh, like she's cool, but I don't think I could, you know, I don't think I could ever like marry her or like be with her remote, mm-hmm. like romantically. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You have, you have, you have, you know, people like that do exist who are just like they know exactly what they want, so they do will they will go for like what lines up with what they have going on right then and there. Mm-hmm. Is it always smart to do that? Probably not. I, like once again, I wouldn't suggest it. But you do have people who are like that though, who yeah. just kind of know what they want. They don't really. They feel like they're racing against time, so they don't feel like they have a lot of time to kind of like, you know, play the field and kind of fill out these different girls to see, you know, which one that really strikes me. Or oh, this, you know, this girl makes me feel this way. Like I'm definitely gonna marry her. Like it doesn't always happen like that. It's mm-hmm. usually like. A certain type of woman or whatever or a certain version of woman that men usually look for i could see that yeah i i could see it too from somebody that's already been married mm-hmm. looking for something specific right because they know what went wrong in their first marriage and they're looking for different 
qualities. I guess my take on it is just to not be so consumed in like you have to marry this person right. like yeah people get so caught up in like are they marriage material marriage 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 where it's just like even the situation that you just said like he's 36 37 pretty much knows what he wants but like just to be so focused on getting married again is mm -hmm. like where i'm coming from where it's like you don't have to be so fixated on like I'm trying to get married. Right. This is what I think a married a girl whose marriage material seems like. So this is only what I'm going to go mm -hmm. after. I'm just saying he might miss his wife along the way is yeah. the point I'm coming from. But I understand what you're saying that there are people who I, I think there's a line between like having expectations and like having, mm -hmm. you know, Kind of knowing what you want and characteristics in somebody. No hate to like, you know, drug dealers and things like that. But like maybe somebody doesn't feel like that's marriage material and mm -hmm. that's off of their list. And like, that's okay. I'm just, I'm saying as far as like, don't pinpoint somebody as marriage material right. from get go. Like, yeah, no. sometimes you just have to give people a chance and like, mm -hmm. just see where it goes. But I do understand what you're saying as far as like. It's situational. Like right. people can be at different age points in their life and like feel differently. So I like that. Okay, last one. If you don't feel sparks when you first meet, it's not meant to be. Or if cat. there's not natural chemistry, That's it's so not cat. meant to be. <laughs> That's not real. <laughs> it's not and I <laughs> That statement isn't real. <laughs> and I will say, like, I always uh, and this sounds so cliche, but, like, it is very much in the media, in the movies and stuff like that, that, like, you are supposed to feel this big thing, like, yeah. when you meet, quote-unquote, the one, or mm -hmm. your soulmate, all that bullshit. But, like, when you supposedly find your person or whatever, like, it's supposed to feel like this, you like a like a shift almost in mm -hmm. you, and I'm here to tell you. There is not a shift. <laughs> like, At all. <laughs> there's, no, there's no spark. Now, there could be people who maybe felt like it was fireworks and magic when they first saw their person, and that's awesome. I just don't want everybody to like feel like they have to feel that way on their first date or something, or mm -hmm. like, oh, the the chemistry or like the fiery passion burn just wasn't there, or I didn't feel like super physically attracted to him mm -hmm. or her on upon first meeting and stuff like that and it's not like those things don't matter it's just in my opinion those things can gradually build yeah over time and i would just would hate for somebody to not get a second date or a second chance because somebody just didn't feel sparks right. or like super chemistry with you off the bat like i don't know in my opinion that's something that can like natural conversation stuff like that like yeah. i think that does come naturally and if it's hard to like communicate with that person on the first date maybe you you think about going on maybe not think about going on a second one but like just as far as like physical burning attraction mm. chemistry sparks like i just think that's all made up like far fetched it is yeah. i think it's a reach <laughs> very overrated yeah it it <laughs> is cuz like i mean i'll be transparent i told devin this like on our first date, I didn't feel any sort of like, oh my God, this is the man I'm going to marry. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Like some women really come from their first date and some are right. Don't get me wrong. But some come from their first date and they're like, oh my God, like this is right. my man. We're going to be together forever. And then like the, the, the guy ghosts them after like three weeks and like they never talk again. <laughs> like shit like that happens. So like, uh, like after my first date with Devin, like I was literally like, oh, he's really cool. Like, I like him. I want to go out with him again. And like, because mm -hmm. we had really good conversation. And like, I enjoyed that. Like, I just enjoyed my time with him. But it wasn't, I wouldn't say that there were like fireworks, sparks or anything. Yeah, like, no. it didn't have to be that. It was that. really raining. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's like pouring down raining. Down. It was like, you know, it was an unconventional type yeah. of first date. But like, I enjoyed our like time together. Mm -hmm. It felt comfortable and I wanted to do it again. But it wasn't anything where it was just like, 
I like, want to rip his clothes off and like do yeah. all this. Like it does. You don't have to feel that right. when you first meet somebody and it's not over. If you don't feel that, like it's okay. Yeah. No, That's something. Very much okay. Yeah. Like I'll say if you keep giving it tries and giving it tries and just that natural attraction and chemistry just isn't there, then okay. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you tried and like it just didn't. You gave it a whirl. Yeah. You gave it a whirl. It didn't, you know, come through and like, that's okay. But it doesn't have to be like that on the first. Yeah, absolutely. Try. So, okay. Um, that's it. I think, mm-hmm. um, do you want to do, do you want to hop into the hookup or do you want to save a hookup for the next one? Uh, we can go. Okay. Um, so it. let's hop into the hookup. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be hooking you up tonight. Uh, I want to hook you guys up with an EP Woo-hoo. I just dropped titled From Water to Wine. Or if you look it up, it's Organic Dev Presents From Water to Wine. Yes. And the reason being is because uh, I executive produced it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 100% curated by myself, hand-picked artists, hand-picked producers, all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, we're on all DSPs, all platforms. Ooh. Organic Dev presents from water to wine. Um, really excited about this project. It's five tracks. Uh, something subtle, some smooth. You know how I am. I don't really give y'all <laughs> really long projects, but um, yeah, I, I put a lot into it. It was. It's been. It will. It's been in the works for like two years, a year and a half. It was supposed to drop in December, but a lot was going on. You know, the people that I wanted on the project, um, you know, had some things going on. I had some things going on. Just schedules just wasn't matching up together. So it kind of prolonged everything. But uh, this this EP was literally to showcase my musically inclined and talented friends who I also make music with from time to time. some guest producers is uh Pim Pal Seth, of course. Uh, uh, my personal favorite producer right now, who's produced almost well, yeah, literally everything I've probably anything I've ever put out, like Seth produced. So yeah. shout out to him. Uh my boy Will, she will for Will. Uh fun fact, he has a beat placement on this EP, but he was also on the song Rojo with me on my first album I dropped um Red Cloud Ballad. So uh yeah, those are two guest producers I had on. Uh we had Miss Deanna mm-hmm. on the track. Shout out to her. Shout out to Jason Wade, of course. Me and Wade me and Jay Wade always make music like <laughs> we got a tape coming to very soon. So that's be on the lookout for that. Um uh, Shout out to my boy D. Aiken. This was uh, also to kind of showcase his talent and what he has going on. Shout out to Cool Dave. So, yeah, man. If you if you haven't had a chance, go on whatever you got. Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, YouTube itself, whatever. Organic Dev presents From Water to Wine. Cover art also by me. And, yeah. I'm that, so proud of you. That's it's, it. It's good, y'all. It's good. It is. Like, it's. I don't want to give too much into, like, where the name and stuff came from. Cause I don't want to, like, prolong this. But, mm-hmm. like, I have some friends who are more into the. Um, I don't, I don't want to label them, but they do a lot of, like, you know, faith based music, mm-hmm. Christian based music. Um, and, you know, I. I'm able to switch in lanes. Mm-hmm. I'm able to do a little bit of both. But I'm usually like uh, abstract hip hop, mm-hmm. underground type stuff. You know, my type of thing. But uh, I wanted to bring both of those worlds together and mesh them together. Yeah. You know, like secular, non secular music together and just show that, you know, that the, you know, 
the spiritual rappers and stuff like they can kind of they can keep up yeah. they can hold their own yeah and they very much did and yeah. so i i feel like i i handpicked the right people for this project and yeah i'm satisfied with it I yeah am. so from water to wine yeah curated by organic dev <laughs> in the company so good job babe all right y'all let's close it down all right y'all as always all good things let's come to an end y'all boys yes sir we are closing it down we are over an hour on this which i mean that's Enough pretty food. good yeah mm-hmm. we got, got a nice we lengthy can't do with the con. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so um we are heading out um as always make sure you like comment and subscribe again i apologize for the camera, um, we really thought it charged, but I just had a feeling it did not charge all the way. And sometimes, y'all, your gut feeling is right. So we'll make sure we're all charged up correctly for next week. Um, stay tuned. Uh, we will probably make a little bit of content for the engagement shoot just because we'll be looking nice and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned. Maybe a little fit check or something. Very coming. snazzy. Yeah, we'll look a little snazzy. So, um, yes, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you are an audio listener, make sure you are following us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If it's Apple, it is the plus button in the top right. And if it's Spotify, it's the follow button. So make sure you're keeping up with us. Make sure you're following the page um, on Instagram at LNS, the podcast. And yeah, man, just keep up with us. We will see y'all next Wednesday. All right. Stay safe, y'all boys. Bye. What is up, Snackers? What's Woo! going on? Welcome back here. to the pod. Late Night Snacking Podcast. Oh, yes. The most honest podcast. Mm-hmm. The most open podcast. Mm-hmm. And the most wholesome podcast mm-hmm. in, in the, the world. world. Welcome back to the pod, y'all. We are together again for another Wednesday if you are hearing some clickety clacks on the ground, that is our dear son Hendrix. That is young Baklava. Young Baklava is in a very playful mood right now. Um, whoo, Hendrix. 